Hello friends, I am your friendly neighborhood Reza. Welcome to Channel Reza Blade, the channel where very, very late is better than never. <laughs> New friends and old, if you like my videos or this video in particular, please click like and leave a comment below. Hopefully a nice one. Tell me what art spots you like best in this video or perhaps there's an aspect of nail art you want to know more about and I can help you with that. Um, and your likes and comments really help me out. I'm a small channel. Today I'm finally going over Maniology's Fairy Fantasy Nail Art subscription box from um, April. Um, I have been struggling with this one, I have to be honest. I have a little beef with these and I will talk about it uh, when it's time to talk about it. <laughs> if this is a box you received, I really hope my video does help inspire you. And uh, if you have a sudden need for anything from Maniology, you can use my code REZA, R-E-Z-A-10. Um, for a 10% discount and the only I, I only ever get like 20 bucks every now and then from them and that's just to pay for my subscription box that I review for you guys so um, I don't know if you want enough with the talking more of the arting so I will show you my full hand manis first um, talk about how I did them maybe I should show you the plates first and, oh, oh, and I want this off my table, so I have to tell you, there is a giveaway video coming up this week, probably Friday or Saturday. In, in my giveaway videos, I, um, I will give you a secret question during the video, um, and uh, you answer it in the comments, and I will enter you in my contest. This is a $40 Moyu London beautiful holographic binder. Uh, this giveaway is sponsored by uh, Butometry. Uh, it's a brand I work with. Some of you know them. They're having a 25% off Christmas in July sale right now, which is crazy. It ends on the 31st of July. Anyway, and then this plate, not this exact plate, one with the, the cover still on, but this plate is the one I'm giving away. It is a really super one. Anyway, I just told you about that because I have to get this off my table to show you all the stuff. I have so much art, which is always how I do this, right? Um, so, paper swatches or plates first? I mean, I'll, I'll let you look at the setup of the plates. Here's MX101. And we've got a bunch of nail, full nail images. But you'll notice on these plates, the images, the details are so tiny. Like, I am uh, using my reading glasses plus a magnifying glass. See, there's a fairy kind of hidden in there. Like, I had to, uh, I have to talk to you about these images on the paper swatches only because they're so hard to see. Now, the camera's doing pretty well. But, like, I tried to fill in details on her and it was just not happening, even with the magnifying glass I was using. So, uh, it took me a few months, to be honest, to film this video. I put it off for a long time because it was very difficult. Uh, I really didn't like that. Now, these are fun, and these were easy. Um, and the, these silhouette things, I mean, this plate is far more easy to work with than the other plate. However, this is funny, I like the Manny I did with the other plate, which is the one I'm wearing, uh, better. Um, now what I did was I did kind of a gradient um, over white, uh, like a opulescent white um, with greens and blues. And um, there's the little fairy there. I really like that touch. She's over the white so you can see her. I really wanted to do these as reverse stamping, but I just could not get in there. And that's my beef. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I, I won't, I won't get too catty. It's, this is a me thing. I realized that in my twenties, I probably could have seen those, those items. So that's my first full set. And I think this one might be my favorite. Let me know if you agree. My second full set, which I didn't wear cause I don't want to get fingerprints all over this stuff as I'm touching it. So is silhouette. I'm working with uh, again, gradients. I'm doing pink and orange which is a really fun combination and the white shows up super nice. Um, these silhouettes are really easy to work into uh, any other nail art. Uh, those are gonna be the kind of images that you can bring to other designs, even if it's not 
like from these specific plates. In fact, Maniology has already had a fairy themed subscription box. MXM053 and MXM054. I did review these and I will put that review in my um, description box below. Um, I did maybe combine a couple of elements with this, but I don't remember which ones. The butterflies definitely are on one of the uh, single nail swatches that I remember. But I um, really like this image. He's big, but I really like this one. Anyway, these are a little bit more versatile uh, for various things, maybe. We'll see. And then the other supplemental plate I used was Maniology M179, which is not a subscription plate, but I wanted all these flower details because, no spoiler here, we're dealing with flower fairies. A little bit about that later. Um, there, there is a, uh, Dev mentioned that there is a specific kind of um, inspiration for these. Uh, that's why these muted colors and the specific kinds of images and we're going to talk about you know you know it's one of my videos so you know there's going to be some art history in here right we're going to talk about a couple of artists that worked on fairy flower fairies in the beginning of the 20th century so that's going to be so much fun i'm going to get these out of here because again they're just supplemental plates now let's get to the actual plate details i always swatch on paper it helps me design sometimes i'll design on paper stamping on paper um it lets me really see these these really tight details and you notice how close i'm having to come to the camera some of these details are just so tough to see i'm gonna actually i'm gonna put my reading glasses on and see if that helps me oh oh my goodness <laughs> night and day okay so now in the camera lens i can see them enough to talk to you about them so these would be fun, uh, whether you use them as is or you re reverse stamp them. Um, they're pretty tiny, so you want to use a really fine, like a zero zero brush. If you are filling in tiny wings like that, or like, let's say one of those little buds. Uh, then we have some other flowers, etc., because these are flower fairies. This is one of my favorite images. I used that a few times, I think. I really like this lady with the, she's on the dandelion and the puffed stage, I think. I don't know what that stage is actually called. I, I wish I'd, I, I knew, I, I'd like to know more about flowers than I do. All right, and but these fairy silhouettes are just a joy. And then, and then we come to, I don't know why, I guess these are. These are the tile images on MX101. So here we come to these super detailed images. Younger eyes than mine. Can I wanted to reverse stamp her. I just couldn't get there. Um, but I like I said, you see how, you know, you see it once on the plate and you're like, what is that? And then you stamp it on paper and you're like, oh, my eyes. I see now. The scales have fallen from my eyes and now I see all the fairies in their glory. So, um, let's talk MX100, 100, no, 102. We had plate 100 in the previous video. I mean, in the previous box. All right, so here we have some scroll work. There's clearly meant to be an image in there. There's lots of choices. Here's a very awesome silhouette image that I used. Um, I took the rabbit out but I did use that silhouette image of those lovely flowers. And then we've got some various fairy doors, fairy domains, or domiciles is really what I meant there. And then some other flowers. Look, I think this flower has a face. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tiny, tiny details, but I think it's a flower with a face. And then we've got fairy homes within flowers, which is a great idea. And then we've got a bunch of toadstools, mushrooms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, always associated with fairies. Don't ever enter a mushroom ring is a common superstition. Here's some more silhouette work. And I love this ornate work. Um, I would love to turn that into a Tudor rose. Um, 
Except I think Tudor Roses have six, not five. Anyway, I don't know. No, they're Sankofoils. They're five, I think. Anyway, this is a really cool one. Very adaptable. You know how I like to be able to use plates for more than one thing. Like this would be really cool as a, like a background design for something for like a really fancy big reverse stamp. Like, um, let me kind of give you an idea of what I mean. I might have to grab might have to grab, like say we did this uh, flower, or maybe this big butterfly, bigger butterfly than that, I think though. Anyway, and we could put it on the fancy, fancy schmancy background. Where'd it go, where'd it go? Here we go. Um, and then we have uh, various fairies and flowers. I used him, he was fun. Um, these are really Cicely Mary Barker. I'm going to talk about the two artists that I think um, uh, kind of inspired this plate, maybe. Um, just my guess, but it is true art history, so maybe you'll enjoy it. And I did have to do this castle. It's fairy palace. All right, so let's get on to the nail art, shall we? I know that's everybody's favorite part. I uh, I, I live to give you inspiration. Um I hope that you benefit from my creativity and um, non-stop brain. <laughs> I can't turn it off. So here's the other full set. Like I said, these polishes are from Linby Designs, but I don't really remember the names of them. And these two are the polishes that came with, uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Um, I didn't. I have lost track of the polishes that came with this box. I will be right back. Here we go, home free. All right, so we have lace wing, a kind of a prugly or pretty ugly, that's the term in the polish community, um, metallic green, kind of an olive maybe. Uh, this one is fey, and this is kind of a mauve-ish, uh, pinker maybe than mauve. Um, and I did swatch them like normal. Here's how I swatched them. I'll swatch them. Now these were two coats each. There was just a little bit of see-through on the, on the first coat. And then here is over black and white. Um, the lace wing, not so much over the black, I say. And then maybe the fey over the black, but I still think there are better options out there. Um, hit the bottle and be loves place plates are two stamping polishes that no matter what it is it's going to show up over black well I mean unless it's like dark navy blue or something that would be silly and then this one is sideways because <laughs> the last few sub boxes I've gotten for maniology the labels have come off of the uh polishes like immediately after taking them out I'll set them down on my workspace and I'll pick them up and the and the label will be gone anyway. So at first I thought that this was the green that came with uh, that came with the box. It did a little better on black. I don't know. I I just these are okay. Now the the rationale between these kind of earthy muted tones are because of the era in which they were painted. So I do agree with that. I understand. Um, also, so I did some comparisons. These are uh, some of the metallics that, um, so the main color, the actual Fey and Lace Winger down here, and then some comparisons are up here. Uh, and I didn't write down the names because I'm so wise. Let me actually have these, um, the pink uh, open. So something like these, so, uh, Mocha Java, uh, Wooly, satin blush anyway so something like that is what I compared it to just so you could get a sense for where it lays on Maniology's palette and then we have a bunch of fun art things for me to show you so so we've got um I've explained this one to you already I did a gradient and then I did simple silhouette stamping with white here is one of my favorites that's uh 
I did my uh, reverse stamping gradient trick here. I do have a video uh, about that. Um, I'll try to remember to put it in the description box, but if I forget, please somebody comment and tell me. And I put these little toadstool dots on here just because I wanted them, but those, those details. But this one was really fun to do. And I stole those stars from another plate, but I don't remember which one. And I really like the way I colored him in. He reminds me of Cicely Mary Barker's Flower Fairies. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, this one, I almost freehanded the moon, not quite. Um, and then here is the fairy castle. And then these um, little white dots, that is a coat, just a top coat that gives you those little white texture dots, kind of like snow or stars, which is what I meant here. Um, and that was from P Familiar Polish. They are on Etsy. Now this, I use this fairy image to make a modified French tip. It's really easy to do. Um, you work it kind of like a reverse stamp and that you, you pick up this stamp and then kind of over it or over a border, you paint that bottom darker color and then it all goes on at once and you don't have to worry about working with scotch tape or anything like that to make your color blocking happen. Um, this one, I told you I did use the fairies from the previous Fairy Kingdom set, I mean the butterflies from that set, but there is also a flower fairy here at the bottom, resting, looking around her. Uh, that is from the new plates. And then here is, the, this is the image that I said has, you know, there's a hole inside meant to be, kind of meant to be a border image. So I did some sponging, or was it dry brushing? I think it might have been dry brushing on the um, off-white base. And then I added the green. And then I decided I needed a re neon red silhouette of a fairy. So that's what I did there. And then here's some, just some simple reverse stamping of the toadstools. I've already gotten to my swatches, the mystery polish that doesn't have a label. I really wish I knew what this was. It's a nice one. All right, and here we get to, this one is a mistake. I always show you how it is. Um, this one has uh, gold in the green, so the gold, and it's a lighter green, like it too close to the gold that is over it, so it doesn't really work. But I wanted to show you so you know. Sometimes I practice on paper with that sort of thing. I'll put down a coat of the nail polish and then I'll stamp on top of it. You can also use your mat for that, but I'm lazy and I do the paper. So, um, and this one was the border also, and I put a fleur de lis from the, the other previous Fairy Kingdom design. Here, I also used a dark green and the border, the vine border. And I used the, the puff fairy, and then she's holding a lovely, maybe a rose, maybe something else, but whatever. This one was fun. I used the background image from the previous set of fairy plates. Um, and then the little tree with the fairy door that is from this uh, set, this, this uh, subscription box. Here is a flower from the flower plate I showed you earlier. And you really have to look to see this one. I failed big time. Here's our flower fairy just camouflaging in with the... Uh, and I did want it to... I wanted... Here's what I wanted. I wanted to make it look like the fairy was trying to camouflage within the flower. But what I accomplished was a successful camouflage within the flower, which is technically not what I wanted. Um, here we have a lovely blue with a pink flash. Uh, this is a graceful polish uh, release from, I think, the last year. Love that one. So I did one of the flowers from the flower plate, and then I added these fairies in white, and they look like they're just having a grand old time. So I, I think I'm done, and so now I'll show you the inspiration. Um... So I'm thinking mainly Margaret Tarrant and Cicely Mary Baker, Barker, sorry. There's also Arthur Rackham. I'll show you one of his. He was around that time, but his style was different. Um, but he illustrated many a fairy tale. Um, and let me show you. 
sorry, I hid the art pictures from myself. All right, so here's a Mar Mar Margaret Tarrant. This is Ladies Smock Fairies. Look at how cool that is. And you see they are kind of muted colors. Um, Ma Margaret Tarrant did these lovely Christmas cards for the De Medici Society. Um, Margaret Tarrant, the Brownies Christmas card, 1930s. And here is actually Margaret Tarrant. Um, Midsummer Night, these are all going to be Margaret Tarrant. That's 1920. Poppy Fa Fla Fairy, 23. Um, this is Tom Thumb, the Queen and the Fairies sent him flying, about 1920. You'll forgive the watermark, it's not my image. Um, but there is Tom Thumb, and here is clearly the Queen. And she is saying, away with you. Uh, Terrence Tulip Fairy. I like that she labels it. Um, and Fairies Mits the Sweet Peas. That's one of my favorite fairies from this series. Here is Fairy Lights from 1915. Lovely, beautiful image here. I love these illustrations. They make me so happy. Uh, Cicely and Mary Barker. These are from the 30s and the 40s, okay. Primrose Fairy. Honeysuckle Fairy. Lily of the Valley Fairy. And this is the Thrift Fairy. I don't know, maybe that's a kind of flower? I was confused by that and I did not Google that. Here's the Red Clover Fairy. I love her. Fun fact about Cicely Mary Barker, she actually made these costumes for her school children. She was a teacher and after she painted and illustrated them, then she would tear, tear up the components and reuse them for other costumes. This one's the Gorse Fairy. Look at that little, almost a kiss, maybe not. They look like pretty young fairies to be experimenting in these matters. Um, and then we've got just a pretty good little triptych here of three images. We, we recognize the Honeysuckle Fairy, but the other two I don't know. Um, it could be the Oak Leaf Fairy, it could be the Acorn Fairy, don't know. Love that hat. Very nice. All right, here's some stuff from around that time that is not the two women that I am more inspired by. Here's one of Arthur Rackham's. Uh, this is Dancing with the Fairies from 1906. Very kind of dark and romantic. Um, and then here's Harold Gaze, 1884. Um, definitely an entirely different style of illustration. But this reminded me of that one fairy that I had really, um, the intricate fairy that I had a lot of trouble coloring in. Um, and then The Fairy Swing by Dorothy Wheeler, 1941. And that is the end of my artistic presentation. Sorry about the art history lesson. So what do we have here? Uh, whoops, my next videos. Uh, the giveaway video, look for it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Look for it on Friday, July 28th or the Saturday, depending on what happens. Um, and then I told you about the Christmas in July sale from Butometry. I am trying to live stream on YouTube every, uh, what's the word? Every Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Last Sunday's live was fun and it is probably going to be linked in the description box because, I don't know, I've been talking about a lot of my past videos. So thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, share with a friend, actually, if you could, if you think somebody might like my videos. Uh, and as far as the puns, fairy puns just fly right over my head. So on this sign-off, I'm just going to wing it. What's a fairy's favorite drink? Sprite. I'll see you next time. Hope we can visit for a spell. Bye-bye. And hey, go make some art.